Hi, this is Mr. Jeffrey with the Achieve K-12 Online School, putting together a help video for Consumer Math, Unit 8, Section 2. This is Part 1 that we're talking about personal loans. You can see here we're going to go over three different things. First off, a quick overview of what are personal loans and how do we use them. Uh, part 2 would be on calculating the interest of these loans, and then also then the total payment that you'll make, because of course you're going to pay more than you actually get because you're paying for the loan, as well as then using an interest, interest table for these personal loans. So let's get right to it. So what are personal loans? Personal loans, or think of them as an alternate to your credit card. Uh, when you have a credit card, you can go to the store and make purchases with it, and if you don't pay it back, uh, they charge you an interest uh, on that amount of money. Personal loans, where you can't go to a store and use a personal loan every time you make a purchase, personal loans will loan you a chunk of money all at one time and then they will set up then a payment plan where you pay back so much each month with a certain amount of interest rate on it. They're much better than credit cards so they're an alternative you could say to credit cards um, whereas credit cards will have a much higher interest rate um, the personal loan will typically then have a lower uh, APR or annual, annual percentage rate. Um, that means you're going to get the same amount of money, um, you're just going to pay less interest on it, mean overall you're going to pay less money to get that money back. Uh, again, the downside is you're going to have to take it in one chunk, and you can't really use it at stores, but the upside is you will end up paying less money for getting that money. Um, the other thing you should know is whereas a credit card you can get through a bank, but you can also get it through just the major credit card companies, a personal loan um, typically is through either a credit union, um, there's many credit unions around. There's a whole bunch of you know different ones that you could go to, as well as then a bank. You could go to your own personal bank and get one of these, or you could also go to other banks and look at opening an account with them as well. The next set of questions we're looking at is how much will I pay altogether when you take out this personal loan, and how much will I pay in interest uh, on this loan? So those are the two things we're looking at here. Let's do this by looking at an example. Let's say you were going to take out a personal loan in the amount of $400. So that's the amount you're taking out a $400 loan. Let's then say when you go to the bank, they tell you you're going to pay $70 per month. And you're going to do this for a grand total of six months. So using this information, we can put together and answer these two questions to see exactly how much money you'll be paying over this loan. So for the first part, how much will I pay altogether? We need to figure out uh, how much uh, it'll be. You're doing $70 per month for six months. So your total payment is just a simple formula of your monthly payment, however much much you'll be paying to the bank each month and we're going to multiply that times the number of months you're going to do that for. So our total payment here is going to be our monthly payment which is seventy dollars and we're paying seventy dollars for six months so we can use our calculator to help her solve but you might be able to do that one in your head. Seventy times six is four hundred and twenty dollars. So this answers the first question how much will you pay altogether? Well, you will pay $420 altogether. Now for the second part, well, how much of this will you just pay in interest? There's another formula uh, to do it, but it's not very complicated. You can probably think through this yourself. If you take, though, your total payment, that was that $420 that we just found, and we're going to subtract that, we're going to take away the loan amount the actual amount that you started with uh, at the beginning of this loan. So you can see for our interest would be that we actually are paying $420 but we're only getting out of this loan $400. So we can easily see then that our interest amount is just $20. That's that extra amount on top of what you're getting that you will actually end up paying back to the bank for loaning you this money uh, in the first place. 
Sometimes these banks or credit unions, when you take out a personal uh, loan, will use an interest table to determine how much you're going to have to owe them for the amount of money you take out. Now how the interest table works is instead of just taking a set amount of money out at a certain interest rate, your interest rate might vary depending on how long it's going to take you to repay your loan. Obviously, by looking at this chart, you can see we have uh, the number of months here on the left. Then we have two different interest rates. We have 11% and 13% interest rate. Uh, those percentages might vary on things like your credit score. If you've heard the commercials on TV for free credit report.com and things like that, uh, oftentimes a bank will look at your credit rating uh, to determine what kind of a, a loan they can get, whether they have to charge you a higher or a lower interest rate. Also then we mentioned how long it takes you to pay it off. If you pay off the loan in a short period of time, like three months, you're going to pay a smaller rate than if it takes you, say, 12 months to pay off, you're going to pay a higher rate. Basically because the bank is loaning you that money for a longer period of time, they're waiting longer to get their money back from you, therefore they're going to charge you more for it. So it's always better to uh, look for the lowest interest rate and also try to pay things off in the least amount of time possible. So let's look at how this interest table then affects things when we have an example. Let's say we have an example here where we're going to have a $750 loan. We're going to take this out from the bank. and The bank has determined we're going to have an annual percentage rate of 11%. Um, let's take a look at how this would compare over two different time periods then. Because we have the amount and the rate, what's missing then is, well, how long are we going to pay this loan off for? Let's say then the bank is going to offer us a choice that we get to select uh, which one, uh, which amount of months we can use. So let's start by first examining what it would be like if we paid it off over three months. So the questions that you're going to be asked here first will be, well, how much is the interest? What is the amount of money then that we're going to owe back to the bank on top of the amount that we're taking the loan for? So to find the amount of interest, we're first going to take the loan amount, the amount of money we're borrowing, and we're going to divide that by 100. The reason we do that is up here you can see on your loan interest tables, these are often, often done by per 100, meaning this interest rate, this rate of 2.75 for the 11%, is per every $100 we take out. Then we have to multiply that from the interest from the table. So what we mean by interest from table would be over here, the interest amount here that it tells us from the table. This is the number then that we'll use. So now that we see what the formula looks like, let's plug in our actual values uh, for this example. So the interest amount would be the loan amount, which is $750. We're dividing that up into $100 chunks to see uh, how, you know, because the more money it'd be a higher number, less money would be a lower number, so that affects the amount, as well as then the interest uh, from the table. 11% for three months is 2.75. We can then use our calculator to help us finish this problem. 750 divided into $100 chunks gives us 7.5, as well as then multiplying this times 2.75 tells us that our interest is 20.625. Remember, whenever you use a calculator or, or do the math to solve these type of problems, we're talking about dollar and cents amounts. 20.625 is not a dollar amount. Dollars only come with two places after the decimal point, so we will always want to round. Our 5 here tells the 2 to round up, so we'd actually have $20.63. So that's our answer here is $20.63, and that's the amount of, in, or of interest we will pay overall. So now the next question, though, that we might get, well, what then is the total amount that you will be paying? Because you're going to be paying more than just the loan amount. So we take our loan amount, and we'll add to it the amount of interest that we just calculated that we will be paying. Our loan amount is $750. We're going to add on that $20.63 worth of interest, and we'll find that we actually end up paying 
$770.63. So that's the amount we'll actually end up paying back to the bank. Then finally you might wonder, well, what is my payment per month going to be? because we're going to have to pay a portion of this back every month over the three months. We can't just simply wait till the last month and then pay it all back. The bank's going to want it paid back over time. So our payment per month then, we're going to take our total amount, not the $750, but instead the amount with the interest added in, and we're going to divide this then by the number of months that we're paying this loan back over. So we'll take our grand total, which was $770.63, and we'll divide this by 3, because we said we were going to try to pay it off over 3 months. Using our calculator, we find that our answer is $256.88. Remember, again, rounding it off to just two places after the decimal. So $256.88. So 2, 5, 6, and 88 cents per month. Now that might seem like a lot, but um, it's paid over three months, and in fact we're only paying $20 worth of interest. Now we're going to do this again, but you see I've erased our previous values, and I've written them here in yellow so we can use them as a comparison. Last time we said the bank was giving us a choice and that time we figured out our amounts for three months. Now let's look at the other end of it. Let's say we're going to do this over an entire 12 months instead. We have the same loan amount of $750 and we have the same interest rate of 11, but this time we're just increasing the amount of time that we're going to pay the loan back over. So let's first calculate our interest. We have the same loan amount of $750 and it still be dividing by 100 because remember this chart is the rate per every $100. And then we're going to multiply this by the interest from the table. This time we're still under 11% but we're going down to 12 months. So we have an increased interest rate. Our interest rate is now 11. So we're going to do the same calculation that we did before. 750 divided by 100, and then take that amount times our interest rate of 11. We have $82.5. Remember, when we're talking numbers and cents, it would be 82.50. We want to add that zero because dollars always has two places after the decimal. We can compare that amount up here to our amount from our first time for three months. Over three months, we're only going to pay an extra $20.63. But because now we're spreading it out over 12 months, we owe the bank a lot more money for this period of time. We'll now owe the bank $82 instead. Well, now let's continue it out and figure out our total amount. Well, our total amount is our original loan of $750. Now we're adding an interest level of $82.50 on top of that. So if we use our calculator we find out that we're going to pay over the entire 12 months, we're actually going to pay $832.50. So let's compare that again back here to our first example when we did three months. We can see here we only paid about $770, whereas this time we're going to pay more money because we're doing it over 12 months. But now this will be the interesting part. Let's see what happens to our payment per month. Our payment per month is our $832.50, but now we're going to divide it over the entire 12 months that we're paying back this loan. So we start again with our calculator, and we divide it by our 12 months. Remember, it only has two places, so it would be $69.38. So let's compare this then back to our amount from before. Over three months, we were paying $256 a month, whereas now, over 12 months, we only pay just under $70 a month. So the trade-offs here is that over three months, we have to pay a lot more each month, but we instead uh, don't have very much interest over the entire loan. However, with this other amount, we have to make more payments, but they're at a much lower amount. I hope this video helped.